On today's show, we show you how to slice those big models to fit on your smaller 3D printers. Hey, welcome to the first layer. My name is Brian Baker. You can also call me Little Rich. And today I've got a question for you. Have you ever wanted to print a large 3D model, but you've got something a little bit tinier like an Ender 3 monoprice unit or anything smaller? Well, today I'm going to show you a new product on the market that's able to help you slice that model in a single step. Let's go have a look. So Luban is a new tool being offered that allows you in a single click to slice your 3D model to fit your printer bed, regardless of printer size, as I'll show you today. Uh, you can download it at the links below. And as of this taping, the pricing has not been released. So let's have a look at the software here. So Luban, first of all, offers pretty much no documentation right now. It's uh, a little bit interesting to learn, but once you get the hang of it, you'll find it quite simple. So all you'll need for Luban is an STL file and the software interface. You can run it on Windows, and I believe there was a Mac installer in there as well. So to get started, we are going to go and open an STL file. Now, in this case, I have downloaded the standard XYZ calibration cube. And once double clicked, we're going to have it in this very colorful retro 1990s feel here. Now, apparently, this program has a bunch of other features, but we're only going to focus on the Luban feature. So to get started, you click on Mesh and Luban. And make sure when this window pops up to select millimeter. If you select meter, you are going to get a giant 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 set of STL files. So for now let's stick with millimeter sizing. Once this window pops up, you're going to select from the method, you're going to select module. And then we're going to go and in the output fields define the size of your printer. So for ICR10 or let's go with an Ender 3. So for an Ender 3, you would have a 220 by 220 by 250 build. And when we click away, it's not going to offer us any slicing options because I sure hope you can print a 20 millimeter cube on here. But let's say we want to go and print this in four tiny pieces. So if we make our build area only capable of a 15 millimeter by 15 millimeter by 15 millimeter build area and hit enter, we are going to get it sliced in tiny pieces to which you can see with the little green lines. Now, we also have the option of defining the plug shape. What the plug shape is, is a, uh, the method of seaming pieces together. In my experience so far, you may need to shave off a little bit when you print these, but for now, it gives you a ton of options. You can go squares, circles, hexagons, whatever you prefer. Let's go with square for the sake of easy printing. Finally, we click on export parts. It's going to ask for a folder. And you can select any folder because it's going to create some subfolders in there. We will put it in the same folder where we had the STL and click select folder. Once done, you'll actually have a color showing every single piece of the new sliced up model. In addition, you will find the export STLs in a date and time stamped folder on your computer, along with some other information that I have not personally looked at yet you'll be concerned with your eight sliced STLs. Let's take them over to a slicer and have a look. All right, so now to bring those models into uh, Cura in this situation, all you have to do is navigate to your exported file and grab all your eight parts and drop them right into Cura. Now, one thing to note is that the slicer doesn't automatically orient these in the best possible method. So just be sure to take a look at the orientation of each part and make sure your printer will print them in a nice fashion. Now let's slice them up and throw them on the printer. And with that, after one hour, what have we got? A bunch of tiny cubes. <laughs> Let's have a look at these uh, back up close. Okay, so I attempted to put this together to form a Z, which uh, of course I, in the process of things, I forgot to mention 
Do not put supports in the holes, okay? These are far too tiny to fill, but uh, just to show, not every cube is the same size. It will fit together all as one piece in the end, but this is not exactly a practical application for the sake of using this program. This is going to be, if you want to print something, let's say three feet tall on your printer that prints one foot tall. So the nice thing is, is each peg has a different size and it is designed to only go in one way on the hole. So just make sure to play around, fiddle with them. The tolerances are quite tight, so be sure to check those and file away if necessary. Or if you like to live risky like I do, just chop off of the positive supports and glue it all together. But with Luban, this makes it much easier. But with that, Luban is an excellent way to slice up a model into multiple pieces, easy for any printer. Just be sure to know your print size and let it roll away. And that's it for today's show. If you like what you saw, give us a thumbs up. Otherwise, give us a thumbs down. Let us know how we're doing. Subscribe to us on YouTube and be sure to hit that notification bell so you can be notified when new episodes come out. I'd like to thank the, the people keeping us nice and warm today, Spool 3D. Uh, if you need a printer, filament, parts, you name it, Spool 3D's got everything. Be sure to check them out at spool3d.ca. Print it right, print it with Spool 3D. I'd like to also throw out a thank you to all of our Patreon subscribers. Thanks for supporting the channel, helping us all out with your monthly commitments. If you haven't become a Patreon subscriber, check us out at patreon.com slash the first layer. If you're not up for a monthly subscription, that's okay too. We do appreciate coffee. It's always cold in Canada and we always appreciate coffee. Check us out at buymeacoffee.com slash the first layer. Hey, we got some awesome content coming up for you guys too. On October 4th, we are beginning our three minute Thursday segments. So be sure to check those out every second week on Thursdays. And on October 12th, be sure to check out our first ever Friday night live stream. I can't guarantee what's going to go on. I just know that we are outside of work hours. So, hey, come on, join, uh, join in on the fun. And with that, I'd like to say thank you, everyone. Take care of each other. And remember that the first layer is always your foundation for a great print. Have a great day.